So let's continue our program now and recognize the additional scholarship and award winners. Now I will be announcing each of the award winners and ask that you please do hold your applause until after I've provided the highlights on the background of the award, announce the awardee, and describe the awardee accomplishments. So three parts. The Olin E. Teague Memorial Scholarship of $4,000 is awarded to an outstanding student who intends to pursue higher education in science and technology. This year's recipient is Ms. Emma Loudon. A senior, a senior at Park City High School in Park City, Utah, Emma is being recognized for her research during the summer science program for determining the orbital elements for near-Earth asteroid 1999 JD6 and also for its classification as a potentially hazardous asteroid. Ms. Loudon plans to study physics at Princeton in the fall. Ladies and gentlemen, Ms. Emma Loudon. Our next award goes to the winner of the 2016 Dr. Robert H. Goddard Memorial Scholarship. This $10,000 award is given to an outstanding student who plans to pursue undergraduate or postgraduate studies in science and engineering. This year's recipient of the Goddard Memorial Scholarship is Mr. Vincent Esposito, inspired since the ninth grade to study chemistry and now a junior at the University of South Carolina Vincent was selected for his continued study in analytical chemistry with a concentration in organics. Mr. Esposito held an internship at NASA Goddard Space Flight Center investigating solar wind interaction with the lunar surface. Mr. Esposito's research is to design and conduct space-based analytical experiments to detect, locate, and identify organics on other planets or celestial bodies. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Vincent Esposito. <laughs> Moving on now from our scholarship winners, our next group of award winners was nominated and selected by the peers and leaders in each of their respective fields of expertise. Honoring the first director of the National Reconnaissance Office, the Dr. Joseph V. Shurek Award recognizes individuals who have made outstanding contributions to the National Intelligence Space Program and specifically in support of the mission of the NRO. This year's award goes to Dr. Stuart Cameron, director of the Survivability Assurance Office for developing an analytically based architectural level resiliency strategy for the National Reconnaissance Office responsive to and effective against the full range of current and projected threats. Dr. Cameron's career journey in this very important mission area began in 1999 when he started work in the national labs and he moved to the Washington region in 2005 to increase his focus and impact in this area. Dr. Cameron spearheaded this work, but as he told me, were it not for an amazing group of passionate and committed professionals whom he leads, and for the tremendous support of his wife, who is here tonight, but lives and works in Albuquerque, he would not be on stage tonight. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Stuart Cameron. The Noah David Johnson Award recognizes the achievements of young professionals who have shown outstanding innovation in the use of satellite data for operational environmental applications. Please join me in acknowledging Dr. John Rager, a research scientist at the NASA Jet Propulsion Laboratories. Dr. Rager is recognized for finding a way to predict potential catastrophic floods up to 11 months before they occur using the twin NASA gravity recovery and climate experiment satellites and their large sensitivity to changes in the Earth's water storage. Dr. Rager developed three research papers which continued to strengthen his hypothesis 
and ultimately became actionable and usable for enhanced water management. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. John Rager. The Space Club Educator Award was established to recognize the importance of teachers in motivating and guiding students. This year, we present the award to Dr. Carrie Joles, president of the Total Learning Research Institute, for his career's work in inspiring and educating teachers and students in space science through leadership and creative direction. Dr. Joles was a child actor in New York growing up and was the voice of Jimmy from the Space Explorers cartoon from 1957. <laughs> Inspired by space and that experience, which guided his education and pursuits ever since, Dr. Joles created Space Explorers and Mars City, which provide total interactive educational experiences through a nationwide system of learning centers that uses the excitement of Space Shuttle and Mars Lander simulation. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Dr. Carrie Joles. The Astronautics Engineer Award is presented annually in recognition of an aerospace engineer who has made outstanding contributions to the National Space Program in the field of engineering or engineering management. Tonight we honor Mr. Mark Geyer, Deputy Director of NASA Johnson Space Center. Mark is recognized for his many accomplishments through a 26-year distinguished career at NASA in aerospace, systems engineering, and particularly for his leadership in the development and successful flight test of Orion, where he had served as program manager since 2007, a program which moves NASA closer to the goal of human exploration beyond low Earth orbit. Mark worked in various leadership positions within NASA, including the International Space Station Integration Office, it was, in fact, during his work with the space station where Mark caught the bug for human exploration. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Mark Geyer. The National Space Club's Press Award recognizes sustained decades-long excellence in journalism that has both supported and underscored the importance of our nation's endeavors in space. This year, we acknowledge former editor-in-chief of Space News, Mr. Warren Furster. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Furster. Be Mr. Furster began his 21-year Space News career in 1984 as the national affairs reporter covering policy, remote sensing, and commercial launch issues. From there, his beat quickly widened to include the military, NRO, NASA, and NOAA Earth observation programs. As a reporter, Mr. Furster documented the tectonic shifts then taking place across the global space enterprise, including the opening to Russia and the China satellite export controversy. He distinguished himself or shall I say caused a stir during that time in many ways, such as getting thrown out of the Commerce Secretary suite by none other than the Secretary himself, Mickey Cantor, who was accompanied at the time by Director of Central Intelligence, John Deutsch, after crashing an important remote sensing policy meeting. As deputy editor, a role he assumed in 1999, he mentored junior members of the editorial staff while managing a network of freelance correspondents from, no from Tokyo to New Delhi to Cape Canaveral. Before departing Space News this past January as editor-in-chief, a role he has held since 2008, 
Mr. Furster led the overhaul of the print publication from a weekly tabloid-style newspaper to a twice-monthly magazine. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Warren Furster. The Nelson P. Jackson Aerospace Award is presented to a government industry team that worked together during the preceding year to make an outstanding contribution in the missile, aircraft, or space field. Please join me in congratulating the Dawn Project team, represented on stage by Dawn Project Manager, Mr. Robert Mace. We also congratulate Principal Investigator of the Dawn Mission, Professor Christopher Russell, who has joined us here this evening. After an impressive journey of over seven years and more than three billion miles, made possible by Dawn's Advanced Ion Propulsion System, on March 6, 2015, Dawn became the first spacecraft to orbit its second solar system destination, the dwarf planet Ceres. This event followed Dawn's successful exploration in 2011 to 2012 of Vesta, the second most massive asteroid. Dawn has advanced the state of the art in ion propulsion systems operations and demonstrated its utility for the future of solar system exploration. Today, the Dawn mission continues to send data on Ceres, which scientists are analyzing for insights about the dawn of our solar system. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Robert Mace and Professor Christopher Russell of the Dawn Project team. The Eagle Man Mission Award was established in 1984 through a gift from AXA to the National Space Club and Foundation. The award recognizes significant achievement in human spaceflight. Tonight, we present the 2016 Eagle Man Mission Award to the Orion Exploration Flight Test 1 team, represented by Mr. Mark Harisich, Orion Program Manager from NASA Johnson Space Center. In December 2014, NASA and an industry team led by Lockheed Martin achieved a remarkable advancement in our nation's human deep space exploration capability in the launch of Orion's Exploration Flight Test 1. The uncrewed demo mission launched on the Delta IV Heavy was a four and a half hour to orbit and 60,000 mile test which took Orion to a peak altitude more than 15 times farther than the International Space Station. This monumental flight tested various Orion systems, including parachute deployment, separation events, heat shielding, and recovery operations. The NASA Lockheed team engaged the entire country with over 800 small business suppliers across 48 states contributing to Orion. The extraordinary success of the Orion flight test team advances us towards reaching the ultimate goal of carrying astronauts to deep space destinations and returning them safely to Earth. Representing the Orion Exploration Flight Test 1 team, Mr. Mark Harisich, please join me in congratulating Mark and the entire Orion team. The General Bernard Schriever Award honors the father of Air Force space and missile programs. The award highlights excellence in military space operations and acquisition. Tonight, we recognize Commander Peter J. Sheehy, Principal Assistant Program Manager, Mobile User Objective System from the United States Navy. Commander Sheehy provided astute technical management, acquisition leadership, and contract supervision of the $7.7 billion mobile user objective system known as MUOS, a major acquisition program. His critical contributions 
directly enabled the Program Executive Office for Space Systems and the Navy Communications Satellite Program Office to complete an unprecedented year of accomplishments. His ability to efficiently integrate multiple disciplines was instrumental in the Navy space team successfully launching two satellites into geosynchronous orbit in less than eight months, a first for Navy communication satellites. He also led final integration and test of a third satellite and readied the program for its multi-service operational test and evaluation phase two. When operational, MUOS will provide warfighters with more than 10 times greater communications capacity, higher data rates, improved operational availability, and quality of service aiding the Air Force, Army, and Navy. Ladies and gentlemen, Commander Peter Sheehy. July 14, 2015, was Pluto Encounter Day, where the New Horizons mission made its closest approach to Pluto. This day marked the culmination of tremendous scientific and engineering prowess and precision for the New Horizons team. The first mission to Pluto in the Kuiper Belt, the fastest spacecraft ever launched, traveling at speeds of up to 47,000 miles an hour, to rendezvous nearly a decade later with an icy Pluto about as wide as the United States is broad. This was a mission which traveled the farthest to reach its primary science target, three billion miles in almost a decade after launching on January 19, 2006. The largest principal investigator-led space mission ever launched by NASA and part of the NASA New Frontiers program, the New Horizons mission is helping us understand worlds at the edge of our solar system by making the first reconnaissance of the Pluto system and by venturing deeper into the distant, mysterious Kuiper belt, a relic of solar system formation. As part of an extended mission pending NASA approval, the spacecraft is expected to head farther into the Kuiper belt to examine an ancient building block of recently discovered objects more than a billion miles beyond Pluto. New Horizons conducted an over 50-year endeavor by NASA to conduct the initial reconnaissance of the original planets of the solar system. The United States, through NASA, was the first nation to reach Pluto and also the first to investigate all of the original nine planets in this historic quest which stretched from the first reconnaissance of Venus by Mariner 2 in 1962 to the first reconnaissance of Pluto by New Horizons in 2015. The public's high interest in New Horizons showed that space exploration is extremely popular in the U.S. and around the world. Established in 1958, the Dr. Robert H. Goddard Memorial Trophy is awarded in recognition of significant contributions to U.S. leadership in the field of rocketry and astronautics. Every year, a distinguished panel of leaders from across our space community selects the winner of this prestigious award. I am now pleased to present the highest honor this evening to the New Horizons team. Accepting the award on behalf of the New Horizons team is Principal Investigator Dr. Alan Stern. Thank you all. Thank you, Deborah. 
Well, if you don't, if you don't mind my saying so, we did it. It took, it took 26 years. We had to go 3 billion miles. Uh, we had to talk a lot of people into it, but we did it. And not just the New Horizons team, but as Deborah said, we ran the anchor leg in a 50-year relay to open the solar system to exploration. Our parents' generation and our generations, all of us can take credit for that. And I'm very proud of the fact that it was our nation and our space agency that was first to every planet in the solar system. We will go down in history for that. I want to say thank you to the National Space Club on behalf of the entire New Horizons team for this prestigious award. And I want to tell you a little bit about that team. You may not know that 2,000 men and women worked to design, build, test, launch, and fly New Horizons across the solar system. People from almost every state. And although I think the Southwest Research Institute where I work and the Applied Physics Lab who were shoulder to shoulder partners across this entire 15 year project are very well known to all of you as having led New Horizons. The team is a lot broader than that. And I'd like to mention some of the team members that I know are here and I have to start with NASA because NASA made all of this possible. Also on our team, we're Ball Aerospace that built our main remote sensing suite. Lockheed Martin that prepared our nuclear power generator and provided our Atlas V launch vehicle. Boeing that provided the third stage that sent us off to Jupiter on our way to Pluto. the Kinetics Corporation that provided navigation. <laughs> and also the Jet Propulsion Laboratory that provided the deep space network that's bringing all that data back every day and every week still. <laughs> well, there were many more partners as well. I can't take the time to name them all, but it was a big team. And, you know, when we were selected, a lot of people thought we couldn't do it. People said, you know, outer planet missions take eight to ten years to build. You only have four years and two months. Can you make that launch window? People said, your budget, the assigned budget is only two dimes on the dollar compared to Voyager. How are you going to do that? And no mission has ever gotten nuclear launch approval in less than eight years, and you have four years. How are you going to do that? This team, this industry, academia, government team, buckled down and took all those challenges. And through grit and determination and talent and skill, and sometimes a little luck, but also sometimes sheer genius, accomplished it all and broke a paradigm for how to do low cost deep space exploration. I'd like to ask all the members of the New Horizons team, if you worked on this project, would you please stand so you can be recognized as a part of this? I don't know if it's possible, but if the audiovisual people could put that still picture up that we started with, a picture of Pluto, I'd like to say, take a, take a good look at that little planet. I, I have to say, I think the solar system saved the best for last. <laughs> but I also want to say one more thing, and that is that although the New Horizons team accomplished some amazing, amazing things against steep odds, we couldn't have done it if we hadn't stood on the shoulders of giants. 
And those giants are the mission teams that develop the skills and the technology to do interplanetary exploration. So we thank all of the Mariner teams that explored the inner solar system and developed the techniques of interplanetary communication and navigation. And we thank the Pioneer 10 and 11 team that was first to Jupiter and that first developed the utilization of nuclear power for deep space missions. And we thank the Voyager team that pioneered long duration deep space flight for exploration and which explored the middle solar system and the remainder of the giant planets. Had we not had their experience, we could not have made this happen. In two generations, the United States has swept across the solar system from Venus and Mars, now to Pluto and the Kuiper Belt. We have opened the solar system to exploration. We have made what is hard often look easy. And I hope that we have paved the way for Brianna's generation to explore Mars in person. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Stern. We are so thrilled to have you and the New Horizons team here tonight.